Redditors who spend a lot of time in seclusion, at sea, in the air or out in the wilderness, what's the creepiest or most mysterious thing you've seen, found or experienced? More mysterious than creepy. We were camping in Montana near Yellowstone Park in a small campground. It was the off-season and there were maybe five other people there, including a couple three to four spots down who had a large dog with them in their RV. I walked by and the dog was friendly so I petted it and talked to it and went on my way. Later that night I am sitting watching the sunset and reading on my Kindle when a cold nose bumps up under my arm, like dog does when it wants attention. I figured it was the dog and started scratching its head. Before I could look around, my friend came around the corner and froze with a look of fright on his face. I was scratching the head of a pretty big grey wolf, I had no idea what to do, I didn't want to keep touching it but I didn't want to stop and piss it off either. I scratched for maybe 5 to 10 more seconds and it just looked at me like thanks, bro and walked off into the woods. We went to a hotel that night. I live in the only house down a country road, everything else is pasture land and national forest for several miles, about 3 am. My three large dogs go absolutely nuts barking, which sends my husband and I flying out of bed to check on our livestock, assuming coyotes were in the yard, before we could even get our shoes on, we hear muttering on our front porch. He grabs his rifle and whoever it is starts knocking on the door, with no real urgency but more like a casual visitor. I had my cell phone already dialing the cops, and my husband slid up to the peephole. A woman right around her late 20s early 30s was standing outside patiently waiting a few minutes and gently knocking on the door, not fidgeting or nervous, not being aggressive, my husband said, ma'am, the cops are on the way. If you need help, they'll be here in just a few minutes and you're welcome to sit on the swing right there and wait on them. But if there's anyone with you, we are armed in here and will not hesitate to shoot if anyone tries getting into this house. He said she kind of smiled, not creepy but like she was glad her knocking woke someone up. That's okay sir I just wanted to let you know the thing in the woods is coming, and he'll be here soon. Good luck, he said she turned around and walked down the driveway like she hadn't a care in the world. The cops looked all over the place and couldn't find her. It's a 10 minute drive to our driveway from the main road, with no houses until you get into town, another 20 minutes away. Freaked me out for weeks, edit. Tuesday, a neighbor from the next street over asked us if we had any more issues with late night visitors. We told him we hadn't and he said a girl matching the description we gave them when we asked if anyone knew her knocked on their door over the weekend, he said it was the same, she very calmly knocked, but this time she said she needed help. He told her he'd get the cops and an ambulance for her and he heard a male voice say, no cops. The girl started asking for water, or a phone, or to use the bathroom, at 1 or 2 am. He kept her talking and luckily there was a cop super close on the highway this time, because they pulled up and caught them. One girl, two guys. They had a car parked down the road a little bit with another girl in the driver's seat. As it turns out, they are wanted for distributing narcotics and selling stolen goods. They've been stealing people's medication, so for those of you voting drug addicts or possible break-in, good call. Looks like whatever was in the woods isn't coming after all. Driving through the middle of Montana one night, going about 100 miles per hour, passed something on the side of the interstate that looks like a mangled body. Turned around at the next pass, came back. Definitely a body. Put my lights on it and tried to call 911 on my cell. No reception. Got in the car to see if I could pick up cell reception, lights were still on, nothing there but the blood splatters, drove away quick. Serious, I was living in a dirt floor cabin for about 6 months. I would pack a lunch and hike out half a day in random directions. One day I found an abandoned hotel with an attic full of bats. The old kitchen was full of taxidermy. Not abandoned old taxidermy, current taxidermy, in various states of finish. There was a closet with stacks of dead birds, tools, woodworking tools and glass for the display cases, etc. I noped out of there in a hurry. I took my brother there later because he didn't believe me, so I have a witness. I was 13 and on a week-long camping trip. There were two adults and five other kids my age. One night we had spent all day kayaking and got caught in a deluge that threw off our whole schedule for the day. We couldn't quite make it to the location where we were supposed to set up camp for the night before sunset so we just settled a few meters off of the river. We were so exhausted that the adults didn't even want to build a fire. 
Since we didn't have much light and it was hot they told us that we didn't have to build our shelters we could just lay out in our sleeping bags. Everyone put their sleeping bags near a clearing that was created by a fell tree. But I saw the hole created by the roots and thought that there were possible creepy crawlies living in it. So I set my sleeping bag a little further back about 4 meters away from the clearing. I woke up a few hours later to these rapid clicking sounds and sniffing. Thanks to the internet I later identified it as deer noises, there were a bunch of them. The clicking grew closer and was surrounded me on all sides. I had my flashlight but I didn't want to shine it because I was afraid to scare the deer slash creatures because I thought they would trample me. The most vocal deer then stepped on my sleeping bag and eventually sat down on it. I could hear the other deer get comfortable too. After a while I allow myself to peek out, not wearing my glasses, and I see maybe 15 deer slash creatures all just watching the other campers. After several hours I fell asleep and woke back up as they were leaving at sunrise. It was wholesome slash creepy. I camped by myself in northern Minnesota by boat. Found my spot but saw an unidentifiable creepy blob underwater. Set up my tent etc. Went fishing but curiosity led me to the blob again and I finally figured out it was a large dead deer contorted and missing its abdomen. Later I noticed bark scraped off tree about 8 feet up, bear sign. It was getting dark. So I worked at a ranch in southern Arizona, right on the border. I didn't really consider it to be secluded because I had horses and cows. In hindsight, I guess it was really lonely because sometimes they'd talk back to me. Anyways, doing fence borders with a guy from another camp and we had to go down into this dry river bed. As we round the bend we see a bunch of beat up trucks sitting there armed to the teeth. Turns out we ran into some kind of big deal for a cartel. The other guy told me to keep steady and we just walked straight through them on our horses, everyone staring at us, looking like they were ready to shoot us up if we made one false move. I asked about it when we got to the other side without turning into Swiss cheese and the more experienced rancher told me, the cartel only cares about border patrol and cops. They know this is a ranch, and they know we roam around here, and they know we don't say much. Reason being, if they ever assumed the ranchers were the snitches, they could easily find our little ranch houses, only had one person to so many acres. Could have been off and left there for many days before someone noticed. With all that in mind, I had a very passive relationship with those kind from then on. I was on a the bow of a sailboat crossing the Atlantic in pretty heavy winds, going about 15 knots. Crew had to be stationed alone on the bow in two hour shifts at all times, keeping an eye out for anything in the water. About 10 meters away from me I see a weird glint in the water. Then I realize it's a partially submerged shipping container. Before I had time to even open my mouth, we passed it by, missing it by a few feet. And that's the story of how I nearly got shipwrecked in a storm in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I was in a remote area surveying populations of various organisms in mountain streams. One morning an older man crossed the stream I was standing in. We both froze for a second and he continued on his way. He didn't have any gear with him and it's a 15 to 20 mile hike from the nearest, dirt, road. My point is he wasn't just casually wandering through. When I was a scout in Iraq, I was setting up a concealed observation post when we saw the largest cat through our thermals. Like lion slash cheetah slash leopard, the thermals were fuzzy, but we could identify size based on distance with the laser range finder. The thing is all three of those animals used to live in Iraq, but they have been long since extinct in the area. I used to spend a lot of time hiking solo. The creepiest thing I ever saw was another human, in camouflage and clothes, hiding off the edge of a trail in the brush and trees and obviously keeping an eye on anyone who happened by. Added to add, this wasn't in an area where hunting is allowed, just a county area with some hiking slash biking trails, and lots of spots to go off trail and he wasn't fishing. Here, there was just a few meters of dense brush and trees between me and the river. I pretended I didn't see him, walked a bit, pulled out my phone, called someone, and stayed on the phone until I was near people. Until then, I was always pretty comfortable by myself in the woods for hours. Now I carry a quality knife. Just not knowing is enough to creep me out. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town in the surrounding area. To get to as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about five miles in and something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, in his 60s at least, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. 
The closer I got to him the louder he laughed, it wasn't a maniacal laugh, but it set off all the alarms in my head nevertheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well groomed slash cleaned. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. I turned and he was gone. There was no branch cracking, plants rustling, nothing. He was just gone, still rubs me the wrong way. The area I was in was a pretty rough hike, very secluded. Not very many people venture as deep as I was that day. No idea what was going on there. Once when I was trekking through rural Finland alone, a stroll from the campsite, I decided to stop at a lakeside. I sat down by the lake in the moonlight, surrounded by trees and felt very calm for a while. Splashed water on my face and generally refreshed myself. Then after spending some time looking at the water I looked up and across the lake I saw a really tall figure, half as tall as the trees. It was really skinny and I'm pretty sure it looked like it had antlers or horns and really long fingers, don't think it looked at me. I don't know if I was sleep deprived or something, but I remember I froze for a moment before running back to camp. I honestly remember seeing something, it was large and terrifying, but I was probably just tired and saw a trick of the light. This happened once while camping with my then fiancé and a friend of ours. Camped out in the woods in the middle of nowhere on a hot July day. Night came, and it was a full moon so around midnight we decided we'd take a hike around for fun. We basically hiked a trail for a bit and then turned around and hiked it back to the campsite. When we were almost back, we saw a McDonald's cup sitting at the edge of the path. I found this strange as I didn't see the bright red and yellow container when we began the venture, but whatever. However, my buddy decided to open the cup up and found ice cubes at the bottom. That day was easily 90 plus F and at night it was still in the high 70s, so that ice would not have lasted long. Somebody was definitely out there by us and we never found another sign of them. No sound of a car, walking or rustling, nothing. We decided to pack up and go home that night. I was a forest fire lookout in the summers during college. Went weeks between seeing another human sometimes. Some of the things I witnessed or heard while doing that job are just flat unexplained. The one that most sticks out in my mind was laying in bed and watching a strange light move through the trees. Figured it was a car with headlights in until it went vertical up into the air and hung for 30 minutes just sitting 20 to 30 miles away, about parallel with my tower. I was at an elevation of 7000 feet I watched it until it dipped back below the trees and never saw it again. At the time I was super creeped out, but chalked it up to the another one of those dozens of things I've seen that I couldn't explain and no one would believe. But the next day another lookout called me on the radio asking if I'd seen the same light. He was much closer to but on the other side of it. He said from his perspective, after it dipped below the trees, it landed in an area he knew to be a lake that was only accessible by hiking or horseback. It stood out in my mind because it was the only strange light that summer we couldn't explain away by either planes, balloons or tricks of light from cars. I have since wondered if this was a drone, but this was before they were really obtainable to hobbyists and have never seen one with lights that could be seen that bright from 20 miles or one that will hold a hover for 30 minutes that was around then. I saved the best for last. The lake where that light settled down into according to the other lookout, is pretty popular spot for trout fishing. That summer the lake developed some form of algae or something and all the fish died off. They stocked it with fish and they just keep dying off. No one remembers this happening before that summer we saw the light land in it. It was like this for the next three summers that I came back as a lookout. No fish could live in it. Just another weird story from my early 20s as a fire lookout. I was on an outward bound trip in the White River National Forest in Colorado. A part of OB trips is a solo, which can be anywhere from 12 to 48 hours in which the participants are by themselves with a journal and some snacks. I set up a sweet tent in a tree grouping. It had rained the night before so the ground was pretty soft. After setting up I walked around the area. I felt pretty tired, and decided to take a nap. For 8 hours. I woke up in the middle of the night to a bunch of twigs cracking. It turned on my torch to look to see if it was the instructors or any kind of animal. I even called out, hey, you good? Not sure why I said it that way. Nothing. In the morning I found some big cat tracks right by my tent that were not there when I took my nap. It was really unnerving knowing that a mountain lion was near me when I was sleeping. I told the guides about it and they got really particular about keeping our food away from where we were sleeping. I was out turkey hunting. We had started hiking at night, and had found our spots at about 4 am. 
I was roughly a quarter mile away from my hunting partner, shouting distance, it was pitch black, and we were trying to keep our lights off. I kept hearing human footsteps, coming from almost random directions. After getting sufficiently uncomfortable, I heard a voice that sounded like it was maybe 10 feet behind me, hey, lawless syntax. In my hunting partner's voice, I smelled the smell of coffee and Marlboro Reds, I replied sup? But got no response. I flicked my lighter but didn't see anyone in the area. After saying that a couple times, I shouted for my hunting partner, he called back from what sounded like a quarter mile away. It started raining in the distance and heat lightning would occasionally illuminate the field. I saw a tree that looked like a human figure. After a few moments it wasn't there. More footsteps around me. After a while when the sun just started to faintly show, I decided to take a break and was getting a bit creeped out, so I walked the quarter mile to my hunting partner's tree stand to ask him what he wanted, he said that he hadn't left his spot, and didn't walk up to me at any time in the morning. Not 100% what op asks but the area where it happened made it all the more creepier given what unfolded. I like going for walks at night sometimes because I dislike people but I've been trying to get into shape for a while now. So nighttime is great, for that I have a route through some fields which are surrounded by cities and even highways. One major city's skyline is clearly visible from the paths I take on a normal day slash night. Sometimes however we get really thick fog because of a mountain range. One night I was out for a walk and super thick fog hit. It was fun at first. I couldn't even see the end of the light cone from my headlamp and barely saw one foot in front of the other walking my familiar path. Usually you'd hear the sound of the highway close by since it's very busy all day and night. But at some point I noticed I didn't hear it anymore. As a matter of fact, I didn't hear anything but myself. There wasn't even wind. Mind you I was in an open field, no trees to obstruct the wind and there's usually always some. Knowing the area well I just decided to keep on with my path and soldiered on. After a while I heard a sharp whistling. That in itself isn't too weird. People walked their dogs a lot in those fields and it was far away. However the whistling continued to sound through the night and it seemed to get louder and closer. It was somewhat melodic after a while, more like a song than someone trying to catch the attention of a dog or person. The really weird part was that it came from the direction of the open and very muddy fields while it got closer and closer. Sure you can walk there but you'd make plenty of noise and probably lose a shoe or two trying to wade through that mess. I tried ignoring it but it creeped me the hell out. So I kept on walking, slowly getting cold despite walking uphill and faster than usual. The whistling kept up and out of the corner of my eye I could sometimes make out a silhouette illuminated by my bobbing headlamp. That's when I started to really freak out. I live in Germany and we have a tale around here of the Nebel Pfeiffer which basically just translates to fog whistlers. There've been some historic accounts of them, with one of the major ones happening during the Thirty Year War where a small village close by Dusseldorf in 1622 was surrounded by heavy fog overnight. Whistling was heard all around throughout the night and on the next day more than a dozen people were missing, never to be found again. It's said that Neville Pfeiffer tried to lure unsuspecting victims closer. If you can whistle their favorite tune you might survive. If not, they'll devour you. They'll stay right at the edge of how far you can see into the fog and never come any closer. They also only really stalk people who are out and about alone unless there's dire times like during many of the wars in Europe as mentioned above, remembering that freaked me right the hell out and I basically speed walked slash ran home, only experienced it once and probably got the best workout of my life, too. Wouldn't recommend it though. These days when fog hits I turn on my heel and head back home to work out another day. I'm not great enough of a fool to meddle with stuff like this. Felt like I should make a new account for this. I frequently go bush walking all throughout the Blue Mountains, NSW, Australia, and have done since I was a kid with my dad. Sometimes for shorter walks I go alone. Yeah, that could be dangerous, and as a woman, I could have added risk of being attacked or whatever. But I carry a couple of knives with me so I don't really feel threatened. And always bring a satellite phone. I just love and crave that feeling of being entirely surrounded by the bush, anyway. Around 5 years ago I thought it would be a good idea to do an overnight or walk by myself. Shit idea. The walk was fine, 3 or 4 groups of people came by the other way on the first day. Picked a little area to stay overnight towards dusk. Cut a few ferns back and I had a space to stick my little one person tent. I was maybe 30 meters from the track, mostly out of sight behind trees and such. 
The usual wildlife noises were going on as I drifted to sleep, though there was a strange noise, I can only describe it as a bounding sound, like somebody was sprinting through the bush right past me. But it went by way too fast with too few steps to carry a person at distance. Also if you've ever seen the bush in this part of Australia you'd know there isn't much space on the ground to walk freely if you're off the track. You have to at least wade through bushes slash ferns etc kind of like this so you can't exactly sprint full speed without eating shit. I felt a bit uneasy but thought it's probably just stuff falling from a tree or whatever. Next morning I had brekkie and packed up my things, and kept going along the track. Passed a couple of people going the other way, then was alone again for maybe half an hour. Then I heard the sound of a stick being broken, like from someone stepping on it. The sound came from behind me and to my left, away from the track. I turned around to look and nearly died on my feet. A fair distance into the bush was something standing there and looking directly at me. I wanted to believe it was a person but it wasn't. I can't judge the exact height but it was obviously very tall, I'd guess 9 feet its skin was dark grey or brownish. It had a horrifically large head with huge black eyes. I couldn't see a mouth or anything. Its arms and legs were really long, I was almost crying, tears welled up in my eyes. Completely frozen, staring at this creature, it was like my legs were locked in position. The longer the stare went on between me and the creature I had this ever heightening feeling of absolute dread, like nothing I'd ever felt before. The fear built up until I could see my heartbeat and veins and my vision, and I suddenly bolted. I sprinted away, continuing on the track. I ran and ran and was too scared to look behind me. Tears were streaming from my eyes as I was running away. I didn't stop until I actually caught up with some people going the same direction as me. They looked at me and were saying oh my god are you alright? I was tired from running so hard for so long. I told them I saw something in the bush and asked if I could walk with them the rest of the way. It took me 6 months but I did start bush walking again. But I never go alone these days, lol. You couldn't pay me to do it. Edit, the reason I say alien is because it didn't seem to have any fur, and was more lanky slash thin than I'd expect a giant mammal to be. Basically looked like a stretched out human with a greatly enlarged head and eyes. Though the body proportion still looked off compared to a human, especially the length of the arms. A few years ago, I was driving across the country and stopped at Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park to camp for the night. I got in about 4 p.m. and, eager to experience the redwoods for the first time, started out on a 7-mile trail run through the park. This was early November so I knew I had about 1.5 hours until sunset, which I thought was plenty of time for the run. If you've been to the redwoods, you know the terrain is steep, narrow valleys and, of course, unfathomably giant trees. Twilight came early and my pace slowed as the light dwindled. Soon I was walking, just barely able to discern the path. This was the start of a situation, but I knew that I would be warm enough if I kept moving, so I concentrated on staying on the path and absorbing the forest's presence. It was incredibly quiet, I perhaps heard one or two Junkos call the whole time, but not spooky. For lack of a better term, I got a sense of peaceful dignity that existed entirely separate from my human-sized concerns, with maybe two or three miles left in my walk slash run back to the campsite, I rounded a bend and came upon a silvery, glowing orb right in the middle of the trail. I held my eyes closed, was this a trick of my night vision in the fading twilight? But the orb was still there when I opened them. After staring at it for some amount of time I cautiously stuck my hand into it. I didn't feel anything, though I half expected to the sensation of heat or maybe a tingling, but I distinctly remember how the details of my hand appeared in that silvery light. I traced the outline with my hands but couldn't bring myself to step through it. Eventually I grew cold and realized I needed to continue. As I was looking for a way around it, I saw the moon just peeking above the ridge. That's when I realized what it was, I had been playing with a moonbeam that disappeared into the depths of the steep valley. The terrain and rising moon had created a sort of illusion that made it look like a glowing orb was floating in the middle of the trail. It was beautiful, but explainable. That said, I will always hold on to how I felt upon rounding the bend and seeing that orb. It wasn't fear, just a keen sense of my surroundings and a sudden openness to experiencing something incredibly beautiful, even if it defied my understanding of the world. Not me but my mom. When she was on her teen years she used to camp all week near a lake beach, in one of her camping nights she went to the nearest campfire to ask for some wood or something and the couple and their little kid were dead in their hut. She called the rangers and they discovered a snake nest under their barracks. 
I single-handed a boat from Mexico to North Florida. A few days into the trip, horrible weather, broken stuff and too many big ships around resulted in 54 hours without sleep. During the last part of that period a high school girlfriend, a former co-worker and I had a long conversation, except they weren't there and I hadn't seen them in 15 years. I was in Oahu, Hawaii hiking the new Wanu Pali area with my boyfriend one afternoon. It was our first time there and our first time in Hawaii. We had chosen to hike that area because it was beautiful and heard that people see chameleons there sometimes. It was a beautiful hike. It was a very green rainforest with tall trees and bamboo. We decided to get towards the edge of the mountain towards the cliff and that's when me and my boyfriend decided to split since we had the feeling we were getting close. I was alone hiking for probably about 30 minutes when I thought I heard somebody running through the forest in my area. I looked around and then the running sound was followed by silence. I didn't think anything of it so I decided to sit down and take my GoPro camera out and mess with the settings. I was sitting in silence again when I heard leaves brushing through the forest as if somebody was running through it again. Then it sounded like there was more than one person running and all I could think was who chooses to run in a muddy steep forest right next to the edge of a cliff? And then the running stopped again and there was no one there again. I was alone but I started to feel like there were many people staring right at me. It was starting to get uncomfortable and I got up and left the area to look for my boyfriend. I couldn't stop thinking about the sounds I heard of people running and why there was no one there. I googled the area and found out that many people had experienced the same thing I did. The sounds of people running through the forest, people believe they are the sounds of soldiers running through the forest before they fell off the cliff to their death in a battle that took place there in the late 1700s. I thought I was going crazy but googling that place gave me chills. I was in the up Michigan about 20 minutes outside Escanaba with my GF at the time and her family. On the way to her grandparents we'd pass by this long abandoned house. I wanted to stop and get a picture and explore. She wanted nothing to do with it so I went in alone. I spent maybe 15 minutes rummaging around the fossils of someone's life and then poked my head out the top window. She snapped a photo and said, can we GTFO of here now? I went downstairs and I noticed a door I missed earlier. I opened it and the dim ambient light spilled down the first two steps into the cellar. Everything else wasn't black exactly but more like the complete absence of everything. My hair stood up and every cell in my body screamed at me to gently close the door leave, and never come back there again. And I haven't. But I'm here typing this and my eyes are watering and I have goosebumps everywhere. Didn't actually happen to me, but I wanted to share a scary experience a friend of mine had. He was on a sheep farm in mid-February staying in the old farmhouse which was situated in Tipperary in Ireland, being paid to keep an eye on the ewes while they lambed. It's in the middle of nowhere and a long long way from the nearest occupied neighboring farm, so as you do, he packed his shotgun and kept it close to his bed at night and allowed his trusty sheepdog Rocky sleep over his feet at the end of the bed. One night, he said it was two weeks into his watch, it happened. Being mid-February, it was cold as hell and nothing's colder than an old farmhouse with zero insulation, so he had two whiskeys before laying down for the night. Before he went to sleep he checked his gun and patted Rocky. In the middle of the night, he said it was close to 3 am he was woken by a strange animal cry one which scared him bolt upright. Then there was a massive explosion and the window was burst out by a dark shadowy figure. He got such a fright he shat the bed there and then. Hugging the blankets to keep himself safe, he later realized that the cry outside was a stag calling for a mate. The explosion, was caused by him knocking the shotgun over and it going off. And the window exploding out was Rocky, who was scared shitless of guns to start with. When it went off the poor dude jumped through the window. Not me but my dad, my dad was stationed in Germany in the 80s in the US Army, and every 10 years or so they would do what's called a winter reforger which was basically a giant game of war where two sides competed against each other, and why dad happened to be there during one. Him and a buddy operated a tank, but due to some complication, they needed reinforcements, so they had to stay put and wait, they got bored and walked to a small nearby town to get a bottle of apple corn a type of alcohol. As they walked into town they saw a young boy riding a bicycle, they stopped him and asked him the nearest place to get a bottle and he gave them directions, as they were following his directions they saw a bar with a bunch of people in it, but for some reason the kid didn't mention it, but they went in anyway. As soon as they walked in, everyone stopped doing whatever they were doing and stared at my dad and his buddy, literally everyone, including the waitresses. 
After about five seconds everyone simultaneously started acting normal again, like nothing ever happened, a little creeped out, they asked to buy a bottle of apple corn, however they refused to sell one to him, instead giving them both free shots of it, after this they kept insisting that they sit down to eat. They were passing around giant bowls of food and everyone would take some from the bowl and pass it to someone else, but my dad didn't want any food, they just wanted to buy a bottle of apple corn. But they kept refusing, only offering shots and food, finally they got tired of it and left. As they were walking around looking for somewhere else to get the apple corn they passed the young boy again and asked him about the bar and why they refused to sell them the apple corn. The boy turns pale and stammers you went to that place? and immediately cycles away as fast as he possible can. My dad and his buddy look at each other like what? Curious they walk back to the bar to check it again. But when they get there, the bar is completely empty and the lights are off, they stare inside through the glass and the chairs are all upside down on the table with cobwebs everywhere, and the shelves behind the bar are completely empty and not longer stocked with alcohol, and they checked around the whole area to make sure it was the same area and sure enough it was the same bar where only minutes before had been crowded with people. They then found another bar and bought some apple corn and quickly got out of there, to this day my dad and his buddy swear on it and say it's the creepiest thing they've ever witnessed. We were out hunting with a group of guys. We were all about 100 yards from each other. The sun had set and darkness was quickly setting in. We called it a night and I started getting down out of the tree when I heard a twig snap. I froze thinking it was a deer and not wanting to scare it. After sitting for a few minutes this blood-curdling howl comes from where the twig snapped. We don't live in an area with wolves. Like at all. We have coyotes, but they don't make the same sound. My phone started blowing up with the other guys asking if I'd heard it. Yep, yeah, it's nearly under my tree. It was so loud I could feel it in my chest. After about a half hour of silence I gathered all of my bravery. I bailed out of the tree, armed with a knife, and made my way to the group. We never saw it or heard it after that. It was one singular howl in an area that doesn't have wolves, on an island we've hunted for 10 years and never had anything like that happen. Still haven't quite figured out where it came from or what exactly it was. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. On a two-week solo backpacking trip I had four days in seclusion between ranger station check-ins. On the first day of the seclusion, I felt like I was being stalked. As I lay in my tent that night I could hear what sounded to me like footsteps around my camp but never coming too close. In the morning I checked all around and found no evidence of footprints or having any wildlife around me, I broke down camp and took off trying to put it behind me. The second night was the same thing. I grew so paranoid that when I would hike during the day I would go over rocks, walk through streams, anything to try and break the trail so I couldn't be tracked. I'd go around a blind turn and then sit there for an hour waiting to see if something would come behind, at night I couldn't sleep for more than 10-15 minutes before waking up, finally I got to the ranger station check-in and told them what I had been experiencing. I went and set up camp as close to the station as I could. Later the rangers, they offered for me to sleep on their couch for comfort and so I could actually sleep. I accepted and stayed the night indoors, I walked out to my camp in the morning and it had been destroyed. My tent was cut on the side, sleeping bag ripped and backpack turned inside out. The rangers came and reported it, took pictures and everything. I ended up getting one of the rangers to give me a ride back to base camp and going home the next day. Was working at a summer camp and we happened to be on minimal staff that week. That particular day the camp director had left for supplies so after I finished working and a dinner I went to one of the cabins that had a landline to call a friend. Cell phone reception was next to non-existent in that location, we were wedged between a couple of mountains, so it's late twilight, almost nightfall, when I head back to my cabin. As I come around the flagpole I discover I'm not alone, lumbering past the swimming pole is a large black bear, I stop, thinking oh crap. A bear. The bear stops 12 feet away and looks back. I could swear it's thinking oh crap. A human. For a long moment we stand off looking at each other. So I'm shining my flashlight at this wild animal. Totally alone, unarmed. We knew this bear had been visiting our camp because each morning the dumpster was tipped over. It never got into the dumpster, but it tipped it over all the same just to try to get inside. It was making a beeline to the dumpster when we crossed paths, no one had ever seen this animal face to face before. It's about twice my size, so what am I going to do now? At that moment the bear turned and left the camp walking directly away from me, 
Years before at a park ranger educational lecture, the advice had been to stand your ground and keep your cool if you end up face to face with a bear. It worked. Don't know if you would call that creepy or mysterious, but it earned massive respect from the kids once the campers arrived. Somebody told them that I had driven away a bear by myself and that made me the most badass adult in those kids' world. Okay, I'll take that. Not a kid talked back at me all summer, kept my mouth shut about what I actually thought I had done which was stand shining a flashlight for about 15 seconds feeling like a dumbass because I couldn't think of anything better to do. While out fishing I became good friends with a fat beaver. He chilled next to me while I fished for about 2 hours. Just watching me cast and catch fish. We watched an osprey dive into the lake and get a base which was an amazing moment. When the sun started setting he sauntered back into the lake and we went our separate ways. The best fishing experience I had so far. Sorry for a not me but someone else's story story, but here it is anyway. I used to work for the US Forest Service and sometimes worked with an older gentleman that had lots of interesting stories from his many years of life. But by far the most chilling tale was from when he was working in a very secluded area of wilderness and was walking through the forest when a thunderstorm hit. He had seen an opening in the hill a little while back and headed to it to take shelter. Once inside he shined his flashlight to check he wasn't going to wake up a bear or something and found the skeleton of a man, sitting in a lawn chair with a rifle rigged up so he had been able to shoot himself. The skeleton was still wearing jeans and a flannel shirt, I've met a lot of bullshitters in my time and this guy wasn't one, he'd honestly just led an interesting life. This won't sound like the spookiest story but I experienced something really weird twice. This happened was when I went to visit very old church ruins in the forest, the place is kinda spooky itself, the trees are just huge, small trees are crooked, Many oaks and moss everywhere because sun rarely reaches ground, you get it, typical very scary forest, but you don't get bad vibes or anything. So I started walking near ruins and went down the steep road. After a while I realized that everything went silent. No wind, no sounds of birds, nothing, it was so airy and weird. I wasn't afraid but felt like I shouldn't have been there. Still kept going and the sense was getting more and more intense until I finally stopped and stared one big half-dead tree in front of me and couldn't get my eyes off it. I felt hypnotized, like I was in awe with surroundings. When I could finally move I ran away back to the place, I haven't seen anything but I remember the weird feeling and silence. It wasn't a sense of dread, but I felt like I wasn't welcome and I needed to leave as soon as possible. When I was a little younger I spent nearly all of my time out in the woods by myself, slowly charting the acreage behind my family's house that was isolated by miles of back roads. One day around midday in September or October I decided to take a long hike into the area we didn't own, we had a black lab, Sandy, who I had brought with me for safety, and we walked to a creek that we followed some way back into the woods. After some distance, far enough that I no longer recognized my surroundings. The creek spilled into a small reservoir the size of a backyard pool. I remember clearly that it was the time of year where the leaves had started to change color. I remember the pool was black with silt and decorated by a few down trees. Once I had stepped around the very edge of the pool there was a shift. Like if you messed with the contrast or saturation too much in a photo editor. I remember the color, temperature, light, sound, and even objects appeared different to me. As it is an older memory there are a number of details that I can't be sure whether I actually remember or have since fabricated in some way, yet I have infallible confidence in two details. The water had become completely clear and there was notably lush vegetation densely packed around the edge of the pool. I froze for what felt like a number of seconds before I felt something pulling me, my dog tugging on the leash. As I turned my head everything snapped back to normal, however. My surroundings were now dark and it was evidently around sunset. Confused to this day, I've confirmed with family that I left the house after lunch and based on the ground I had covered there was no way I had been in the woods for longer than an hour or two. Sandy was pulling me towards home, towards voices calling, apparently I had been in the woods for 8 hours. We have since moved but to satisfy my nostalgia I actually returned for a visit. The owners were gracious enough to let me have a walk around and as a part of it, I ended up relocating that area by following that creek again. It was the dry season, but I found the area where it must have been and I confirmed that there is no way I could have been in the woods that long. I'm a rational person and I tend to believe things I can see and explain, but this has always eluded me. 
I was running on a logging road in central Wisconsin and stopped because I felt like I was being watched. It was just an instinctive feeling. That's when I noticed a large wolf step out of the forest about 50 yards ahead of me. It was just staring and I stared back. After about 30 seconds of us checking each other out it just slipped back into the woods and was gone. I kept running in the same direction but never really shook the feeling of being watched. I guess it's not that scary because wolves rarely attack people, but you betcha it was creepy enough being alone out there. I live near the criminally underrated north woods of Maine. The creepiest thing I've seen out there is lights. Lights in the woods at night. On two occasions me and a friend approached them they vanished when we got close. It was way off trail, in the middle of nowhere. No one had any business being out there at night. I hope someone sees this because I've been waiting for the perfect place to tell this story. Anyway, me and my friend, both 17, were hiking in deep forest looking for sheds, deer antlers. We were probably 5 kilometers back in the bush in the middle of nowhere, when we heard the loudest, most textbook glass shatter I've ever heard. We looked for an hour but never found any sign of what make the sound. I have experienced something like this in the woods of Portola Valley. I frequently camped by a stream, maybe 3 to 4 weeks total camping time if you add it up, and always there was the sound of the stream in the background, as well as gentle wind, boughs cracking and occasional animal sounds, little birds, crickets, you know, life. Well one night I was woken up by a nightmare of a black slash grayish figure standing by our campsite just standing there. It had no features. It was just a dark slash black color. I don't usually have paranormal fantasies or dreams so this was very scary for me. It scared me, so I woke up with a start. I wake up and then just feels wrong. I wake up my so and tell him I had a nightmare. As I am waking him up, I notice there is no sound. As in, zero sounds of air moving creek sound is gone etc and the entire campground, for which we were there alone, feels extremely, oppressive. Like heat with no heat, and I just have this feeling like we need to go, like now. I have never had a feeling like this since, the more I think about it now the more creepy it feels. My so thank god was listening to me, he had some ghost experiences growing up and he noticed the lack of sound as well, and we pack up and leave probably in less than 30 minutes, that feeling of sticky, Angry oppression didn't leave us until we were completely back in town. This is the stuff that's going to sound craziest. My car would not drive over 15 to 25 miles per hour all the way down the hill. No it wasn't in second gear. No we weren't high. My so and I tried everything but I kept saying we need to get out now. As soon as we got to town it went back to normal. I have no explanation for it to this day. I went on a two and a half week long hike in the middle of nowhere Nevada like a couple of hours from even the smallest of towns. One night, I decided to set up camp on a ridge line overlooking a valley with a dirt road bisecting it. Most nights I would have had a small fire, but it was breezy and was cutting across the ridge pretty hard. I think the weather saved my life. At about 10 p.m., a truck drove down the road and there was a rhythmic pattern of door opens, dome light comes on, driver grabs something from the passenger floorboard, drops it out of the truck, closes the door, drive slowly for 20 seconds, and repeats. He did that for what looked like a mile. I thought it was weird, but whatever. 15 minutes later, a different vehicle, a Suburban, drive up along the road. The driver was holding a flashlight out the window and stopped in the same spots the truck did. Open door. Pick up something. Close door. Drive. Open door. Pick up something. Drive. I don't know what it was. But I'm convinced that I would have ended up with a couple more bullets in me than I'd like, if I had that campfire. I am late to the party. But here you go. When I was a teenager, I used to go out camping by myself. I had a spot where I liked that was across a few fences from my grandparents' house in the middle of nowhere. One of the places I cut through was a pasture full of cattle. Around cattle, especially cattle unfamiliar with me. I try to be very careful to not spook them but otherwise cows are pretty easy going. This was about a mile from my grandparents house and probably about two from my destination. The one time I am thinking of the last time, I slipped through the fence to find the cattle already freaked out. They were insanely agitated about something I was not aware of, so I stayed well clear of them as I went through the pasture. I had a good time camping that night and packed up the next morning. As I went back into that pasture, however, there was this ridiculously bad smell. 
It smelled like a skunk had fought with something in a fertilizer barrel of SHD and the barrel broke open. It was awful. I tried to look around for the cows to make sure they were not going to surprise me and I could not find them. They were just gone. There was some brush and trees, though, so I thought they were just out of sight. I keep walking through the place to get home and the smell is so bad that I set down my stuff at the fence line and decide to investigate. Well, I found the cows. All of them were shot and ripped apart. Someone had carefully shot them in the head with a bolt gun style thing or hit them hard enough with a pointy object to bust through their skulls, and eviscerated all of them. They had also drugged them all into a little shallow ravine and piled the bodies up. It was horrible. I hightailed it out of their back to my gear. My stuff was gone. As in, I set it right here on this rock and it is not within eye shot. A quick glance showed me there was not anything ripped or fallen out, so something someone had picked it up while I was 200 yards away for less than 5 minutes, I think Hussein Bolt would not have been able to catch me on the way home. I never heard anything else about those cows and I did not go back to the old camping spot again. Second story, sorry, I generally prefer to rewrite these from memory but I am on my phone right now and so this is a copied comment from before. I had to adjust some things referencing the question, so I hope it all works. My cousin is with the Forest Service in the Montana slash Wyoming area and I decided to go up there with her to literally test the waters. She does hydrology and has to ride out to the middle of nowhere to test streams and snow runoff to ensure no contaminants, so I thought that sounded fun and wanted to do a bit of a tour with her. We were going to have to camp out there for two nights. So we packed up all our gear in saddlebags or saddle bundles and started out. The first day and night was amazing. Beautiful scenery and amazing air quality. It really is so peaceful out there. I love that area and wish I got to go up there more often. Anyway, we started out on the second day and my cousin said, you want to see something weird? Of course I said yes, so she led me on a bit of a side journey into this tiny little ravine. We ended up traveling about two hours away from our actual path we had laid out. At the very end of this fold in the land, she dismounts and tells me to get off my horse, too. We tie them up in this gorgeous little clearing and she tells me to follow this tiny wildlife path and bring our little rechargeable radio. It is one of those you can plug in or wind up, and it also acts as a lantern if you really need it too, but that kills the batteries quickly. I do and, out in the middle of nowhere, there is a huge coil of wire sticking out of the ground. The wire itself was not weirdly large like some buried transmission wire, but small, like 10 or 12 gauge wiring for a house. It trailed off into the brush and trees, so naturally I decided to follow the thing out of curiosity. My cousin trails behind me as I do, and this wire, after coming straight up from the ground, is strung across limbs of trees then back to the ground, then it snakes around rocks and finally dead ends into an outlet. That outlet is mounted on the side of a desk. It looks like a school teacher's desk from when I was growing up with a metal base and a pseudo wood slash plastic top thing. No chair, no building, no nothing, just this outlet and this desk. I am staring confused as all hell at this desk in the middle of a forest when my cousin takes the radio, pulls at the cord, and plugs it into the outlet. That fucker then lit up and started blaring static, the wire was being fed from somewhere. Now, the place where we were had no road access, no buildings for many miles, and no other people around. And yet, there was a live outlet, weird as shit, no spooky jump scares or bodies, just one, lone powered desk in the middle of the woods. I wish I had taken a picture of it. Rural Maryland. Was walking around 11 PM with a friend through some fields, flying my drone, camping to get some videos at dawn. I'm sitting there calibrating the drone to do a little circle when my friend taps me on the shoulder and points to the southern end of the field. Something huge at least nine feet was walking toward us, slowly though. It was paralyzing. All my life had always been terrified of encountering some kind of weird cryptid SHD or paranormal stuff. I can assure you, it was no bear, it was no man. It was tall, skinny, and moving, and we got out of there. I hunt a lot. My father has property in South Texas and I love going out there alone to spend a weekend and hunt. One weekend it was like mid-November and pretty chilly out. I decided I would head to my blind around late afternoon and stay there through the night. When I arrived to the blind I hadn't seen any animals on the way at all and we are talking a good two miles of walking and not seeing any birds or rabbits or anything. I didn't think anything of it since it was winter of course but you still see some birds. 
As I arrived to the blind I was setting everything up and pulled out this bottle of dye urine to try and lure a buck with. The moment I opened it I started hearing movement on this ridge back behind the blind and kept trying to look out the small windows and see if I could see anything. All of a sudden this loud thud hit the side of the blind. I jumped and thought maybe a deer had fallen off the ridge and hit the blind. I couldn't see anything so I opened the door and saw a huge rock and a nice dent in the side of the blind. Someone or something threw this rock which had to have weighed close to 30 pounds I grabbed my rifle and said damn this most likely out loud threw open the blind door jumped the 6 or 7 feet to the ground and started running back to camp. Nothing else happened other than the fact that that night I didn't hear any coyotes yelping and howling at all which you always hear out there. I got in my truck and left the next morning because I didn't feel like getting stabbed by some junkie or attacked by no Bigfoot. Have only gone out there a few times over the last couple of years and never had another incident. Don't go often due to wild hogs infesting the area. Sorry for it being a jumbled mess I am at work on my phone. I spent two and a half weeks backpacking in Olympic National Park. The weirdness happened about a weekend. I say about because the memory and the timetable of events is a bit fuzzy. I remember that I had gone bushwhacking the day before. This game trail I had been following started to widen a little and by midday of the second day I reached an abandoned cabin. It had obviously been neglected for a long time. The roof was covered in moss and the wooden walls seemed to be suffering from rot, some weather seemed like it was going to move into the area, so I thought I'd take a break inside. It had a musty smell like wet stone, damp crawl space, and rotting wood. Despite the smell, the cabin was quite spacious inside. Incredibly so, actually, there were two rooms, I remember and a third door that went down a long, gently sloping stone tunnel that led down into what I assumed was the cellar. Looking back, I don't see how such a feature wouldn't have been visible from the outside. But there it was, I turned on a flashlight and started walking down. It went on for an impossibly long distance. I had gone about 100 yards, and my flashlight beam just faded into darkness when I shone it down the path ahead. This was not a cellar. There was a stifling, claustrophobic silence that seemed to press down on me the further I went. The darkness was disorienting, and I felt almost intoxicated. I'd probably stumbled on a pocket of poorly oxygenated air. Whatever it was, I'm glad I had enough sense left to wind up out of there pretty quickly. Here's the strange thing, though. I know I couldn't have gone more than 100 or 200 yards down that tunnel. I wasn't inside the cabin for even an hour, but by the time I got out of the it was morning, I had spent the better part of a day inside, needless to say, I backtracked and got out of there. I work on a research vessel and in the North Atlantic around 2011 we saw some extremely bright object fly into the water. Not fall, but with a trajectory and no sound. It was blinding to look at and bright neon green which illuminated the entire sky. It split the low-lying clouds like a sheet and continued to glow until it reached a depth where the light couldn't escape to our vantage point. Me and the other watchstanders all saw it and there was much debate and confusion with no answers. The next night it was like we went into a bird portal. Literally all kinds of sea birds just in a confused tumult, smacking into our radars and falling from the sky. Even some that I wouldn't think could be out so far. Shit creeped me out to no end. I still tell the story from time to time as it is the most singular thing I've seen in a decade of sailing the deep sea. My parents bought a house in the mountains near National Forest land around the time I was in ninth grade. I loved the woods and nature, so I would sneak out at night and walk through the forest all the time. A winter night at a forest in northern Utah is amazing. They can also be terrifying. I later learned to identify some of the more common animal calls and cries, but at the time I knew nothing about any of that. So as I'm wandering alone through this forest one time I heard the most blood-curdling and terrifying scream I have ever heard. I froze the second I heard it, lowered to the ground and didn't move for what seemed like forever. Eventually I heard some quiet scuffling and turned to see a fox run across the dry riverbed near where I was. Scared the absolute SHD out of me. If you've never heard a fox cry, it is the scream of nightmares. You see all kinds of cool stuff in the forest if you can be slow and quiet. I told this on another account once, while on deployment my ship found a ship adrift off the coast of Australia. As an engineer trained for a VBSS I was tasked with assessing the ship's mechanical status on boarding. It was deserted. Fish in the hold and stuff set out like people were just there. There was food on the galley area that was still warm, etc. We never found the crew so we towed the boat in for the authorities. 
absolutely scared out of people and those who didn't board the ship didn't believe us when we were telling them about the state of it. So out where I live it's just outside of a town nestled at the bottom of mountains, FYI I live in Australia, and it's not too secluded since I live with my family and you'll generally come across someone's property every 500 meters but there are some stretches where you won't see a house for a km. One night my mum and I are coming home pretty late at night and we were just talking and listening to the radio. We come around a corner and we both saw this creature that I still don't know what it is till this day, but it had the body the size of a medium dog, mangy looking black fur, an almost abnormally large head, big green eyes, which was the first thing I noticed, but most weirdly an almost impossibly long and thin neck, like it shouldn't be able to support the large head. My mother and I are cussing like sailors at this point and make a U-turn around to get a better look at it, and within 10 seconds there was no trace of it. Normally I'd brush this off as probably a wild dog but the body just didn't look like a dig and it was too big for a cat, even a wild one. The real scary part is that my family and I have seen that maybe two to three times now almost exclusively late at night. However my so's father has said that he's also seen it twice, once at night and once at daytime and I get the feeling we're not the only people in town to have seen it. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.